Hello there, my name's Joe and welcome to my channel. In this video, um, I thought we'd take a look at something um, a bit different. We're going to take a look at the Use Everywhere nodes that were created by um, Chris Goring. And what they are, they're a, a set of nodes that we can use to eliminate the, uh, the need for um, all the spaghetti and the noodles that we normally have connecting and nodes together in our workflow. In fact, I, I can go as far as to say that uh, in the making of this video, no pasta at all has been used. So what I think we'll do is we'll um, start off with, we'll take a look at the um, author's GitHub page. We'll just flick quickly through documentation there. We'll look at how to install Use Everywhere. And then I'll go through my workflow here and how I've put that together. And then we'll uh, try to generate an image and um, I think that should be enough. So um, let's move on and have a look at uh, Chris's GitHub page. So here we are at the uh, author's GitHub page. Um, it seems to be um, very well documented. There are some good images to use here. It's um, these GitHub pages are technical documentation pages. They're not end user manuals. So um, a lot of the stuff here um, would certainly be over my head. I, I, I wouldn't understand it, but there is there's quite a lot of information here that end users um, would understand. One of the very helpful things here is that um, the author is, is supplied a nice little workflow, um, JSON that you could download to demo how this, um, this, this works. So that's really nice. Um, just flicking through. Most of the rest of this, um, I can understand bits and pieces of it. The rest, as I say, over my head. Um, another feature that um, comes with this is the visualization emanation of the links. And we'll look at that in just a second. That's, that's really quite nice. So um, yeah, so documentation page, I will put a link to that in my comments quickly moving on how we can install the um, Use Everywhere nodes. We simply just need to come across to Manager as usual. Go to Install Custom Nodes. Come up to the search box. And if we type, I would suggest type um, Everywhere. Press Return. And there we have it. And then we have the Use everywhere nodes and here as you can see here if you want to click on that link and then that will take you to the github page that we just visited a moment ago but um so to use this you need to install this set of nodes and do a restart so once you've installed um use everywhere two things will uh, can happen if you first of all i'll just show you where this is before i forget if you come up in your comfy ui menu come up to settings you will see here near the top, there are a set of um, anything, anywhere um, options that you can you can play with. So just be aware of those and have a look through in your own time if, if you want to. So they, those are there. And then let's get rid of that. In addition to that, we can now start um, adding um, UE, Use Everywhere nodes. And to do that, quickest way I find if I just left double click and start typing everywhere you start getting the um, nodes that um, we're going to be used and um, what we'll do now is I think I've only used three of them to set up this uh, workflow which is just a standard um, text to image workflow that um, We'll go into that in just a sec. So, yep. So just type every to get to the nodes and um, let's go through now my workflow and see how we can um, use them to generate an image. So taking a look at my workflow that I've put together here. So this is the standard um, text to image workflow that you would get if you just clicked on load default. Um, you get a set of nodes. All I've done is I've removed the connections of those nodes and moved them around the place a bit. So on my workflow here, 
I've um, created, I just created a group of the inputs, which is the load checkpoint. Today I'm going to be using DreamShaper XL model. Um, we've got the prompts and that's about it. Um, the center group here is just the processing. So we've got the K sampler and the empty latent image. And then on the right hand side, I've got the outputs, which is the decode and the save image. And I've also added um, my little play sale node that I like to use a lot just to make a noise when my image is ready so I can drift away and do other stuff. So that's basically my workflow. Let's, uh, let's now just take a look at bringing in well, how the um, use anywhere nodes work. So starting from left to right, um, the first um, UE node I loaded was the Anything Everywhere 3. And all I had to do with that is you just pull your connection from the load checkpoint from model down to anything to this dot here. And then that will immediately recognize that that's supposed to be the model and you'll, um, the model text will appear here. You do the same for clip. So I pull the clip down to the second anything and the word clip appears. Um, VAE, the same, pull down to the third anything and we have the VAE. And as we do that, um, as these components become live, you'll start seeing, if we look here at the case sampler, um, things start coming alive. So you can see that these, um, these parts are now active, which is, which is a really nice thing. So um, I have put these um, duplicate nodes here just to show you what it looks like before you've connected it and what it looks like after you've connected it, just, just for ease of reference. So you wouldn't, wouldn't normally have this lying on my workflow, but that's, that's what I started with. This is what I got. Moving down, um, I used the, or I um, pulled up the prompts everywhere node and connect the conditioning to the top anything and the um, conditioning on the next, sorry, that's the, obviously this is positive prompt. This is the negative prompt. And then I just pull them up to the prompts anywhere. Nice and easy. Coming across to this center group here. So on the latent, um, I've used um, an anything everywhere with the question mark at the, at the end of that. And the reason for this is we have here, we have a latent going to the latent. And so from here, it doesn't understand that we want this latent to um, go to samples. So we have to point it in the right direction. That's probably not a great explanation, but you can see from the diagram what you need to do. So from the latent on the case sampler, um, call up the anything everywhere question mark node, and then just in the input type samples, press return. And it was like, oh, it needs to go to the samples. And then the samples here will light up. So there you go. So nice and easy. So that solves that problem there. Coming down here, as we just mentioned, we've got the empty latent image. From the latent, we just pull that down. Here it is the, the previous one or the unused one. Just pull the connection from the latent down to anything, and then that will come up as latent. Done. So there you are, almost done. And then on the um, outputs, so from the image, I just pulled that down to the anything, which then came up as image and we're ready to go. Now, just for my, just because I use this play sound node a lot, I've just added that with a physical connection to the image um, dot here on the VAD code, just to tell me when the image is ready. And we can see down here on the, the save image, we can see we've got a glowing light there. So we seem to be ready to go. So 
on the input sides of these nodes, um, we can see that everything appears to be active. So I think we're about ready to um, generate an image. Before I do that, let's just quickly go through what, what it is we're trying to generate. Um, have a quick look at the um, positive prompt. So we're going to try and generate a ultra de detailed portrait of a female android, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'll put the, if, if you're interested in doing this, I'll put the uh, copy of the text in my comments below or just pause and, and read this, whichever. So let's get rid of that. Moving across to the, so I said before, we're using Dream Shaper XL. If we look at the case sampler quickly, um, I'm using a fixed seed with the seed number one, two, three, four, five. But I like, seem to like doing that when I'm testing. On this image, I'm using 40 steps, um, CFG of seven, Euler and normal, and denoise is at one. And on the latent image size, it's 1024 by 768. And I think that's about it. So let's try and generate an image. Okay, so we have our image. So that has worked. We've generated an image there with no noodles, no spaghetti. So um, I've got a couple more things I just want to briefly go over. And the first one of those is another thing that comes with this um, set of nodes is the um, UA, UE links. So let me just quickly demo. If I right click on my empty space of my workflow. We have this option here to show UE links. And if I click on that, we can now see the um, what the links are actually doing and how they work, where, where they're going to, which again, it's very, very useful. It's very, very interesting um, utility to have that. So that's UE links and when your eyesight can't take that anymore, I'll just right click again and select hide UE links. So just before I finish off, I just wanted to quickly mention, um, I've had a couple of requests lately for my workflows. Um, now I don't really have a, a good web space to um, drop those to. So I have for the last, for the last couple of my um, videos, I've dropped, my workflow JSONs onto my Dropbox account. Um, and if that works for you, you're, you're uh, very welcome to um, try to access those. I'll put a link into the comments on this video. Um, but I think that's about the best I can do. Having said that, um, most of the workflows I do, because I'm just a new user anyway, are very, very basic and are almost all just based on the text to image workflow. So even this one here, though, it looks a bit different. If you take away the colors and the fact that I've just disconnected, this is just a standard text to image workflow. And I've added a couple of these extra, these UE nodes. So this isn't difficult to set up manually, but I, I'm very happy to add my workflows to my Dropbox. And, and I hope that works if, if you're interested in that. So there we go. Well, I'll leave you with the, um, the dancing um, UE links and uh, just take this opportunity quickly to say um, thank you very much for your time. I do hope you found some of this useful and um, goodbye.